Hi, Nathan. Hi. My co-presenter. <laughs> How are you this morning or this afternoon? Hi. Yeah, very fine. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, so hi, uh, hi Julian, hi Anandan. Hi. So I'll just give a brief uh, introduction to the session, and then uh, you can begin the session, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. So uh, myself, I am Nikhil v Chandran. I am the co-organizer of the Hyperledger Kochi Meetup Group. So welcome to the expert session on uh, Besu an Ethereum client by Hyperledger. Uh, today we have with us the distinguished guest, uh, Julian Gordon. He is the vice president, uh, Asia Pacific at Hyperledger. Julian started his career in London, working in uh, technology within investment banking at HSBC, Lloyds Bank and Klein Ward Benson. He then spent the past uh, 20 plus years in Asia Pacific business development and leadership roles within uh, technology companies like HP, Sun Microsystems, Juniper Networks, and Cisco. Uh, and uh, Julian is a strong advocate for open source and truly transformational potential of blockchain. Uh, the other guest we have is Anantan Rajashekaran. He's a, a research and development engineer at KBA, uh, an active develop developer and blockchain enthusiast with more than three years of experience in multiple blockchain domains. His expertise include Ethereum, Corda, and apparently Besu. I welcome Julian and Anantan to Blockhash Live 2020, uh, and we are delighted to have you with us. And also some housekeeping tasks. If you have any questions uh, during the presentation, uh, type them into the chat. And at the end of the session, you can unmute and ask the questions. So over to you, Julian, for the introduction. Uh, and uh, I hope we have a good session. OK. Excellent. Thank you, Nikhil. That's, that's great. Uh, I'm going to share some slides now, so I'm going to see whether that works, which I'm sure it will. Um, so here we are. Uh, yeah. So can you guys see my slides? Yes, we can see now. Okay. All right. Firstly, thank you, Nikhil, for, uh, for hosting this today and, and Blockhash. Uh, this is a, a, you know, a great event. Uh, so uh, I know it's at the, the meetup with Kochi and Corella. And uh, last year I was in Block Cash. I just wish I was there again. But obviously we all know that that's not possible. But but next year, next year. Actually, my brother in the UK just got his vaccine. So he's a doctor in the UK. So it's happening. <laughs> so we're getting vaccines at last. So hopefully uh, we'll have uh, we'll be past this at some point. Hopefully this year. Um, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about do a little bit of introduction uh, to uh, Bezu. Uh, at this Bezu talk, and then we're going to go to the true expert, which is Nanathan, who's going to talk about, go into more of the details. So what I thought I'd start with, it really just, you know, in terms of Hyperledger, we all know Hyperledger, I think now open source um, uh, blockchain technologies within the Linux Foundation, but what makes it special and why we have grown, and it's really just the heritage that also came with the Linux Foundation, is that we are truly, truly, truly open source, right? So the Hyperledger technical community is 100% open. So all the technology, Bezu, everything that you, we talk about today, you can just go to GitHub. And, and of course, a lot of people then take that technology and wrap it around other technologies, uh, a lot of cloud providers and others, and they write applications on top of that, and obviously provide a service and may charge for that. But the technology itself is, is free. There is no gotcha. And also what makes that possible is, is the technical community. We are about code about coding and uh, it's all about the technical contributions and we have what we call a doocracy as in doocracy so we are driven the people that do the people that get involved the people that contribute to the projects those are the ones that ultimately run the projects and have the influence about what happens in the projects and we need more we're always looking for more and more people because we're developing this code for the common good of of, of all uh, this is the greenhouse, uh, which I think uh, you're all uh, very familiar with, um, you know, particularly projects like uh, Hyperledger Fabric, uh, Hyperledger Sawtooth. Uh, this is a, a family. Of, we started up with two code bases with Fabric uh, five years ago. Actually, Fabric, I think it was in February 20, uh, sorry, in 2016. Uh, and actually, the project started next, next week is our fifth birthday for Hyperledger. So we're going to have a big celebration. I'll talk about that in, in a second. So those are the first, the big projects. We had Borrow early on from a theorem perspective. I mean, those were mostly permission blockchain. Uh, we had Borrow, 
uh, of which you could write is an EBM and you could write uh, um, solidity contracts. That actually now sits on top of Fabric and Sawtooth. We have a bunch of libraries, a bunch of tools, and we have a great lab. I'm not gonna go into those today, uh, but the one with the subtle red circle around it is the one we're gonna be talking about today, uh, Bezu, which I think was August, 2019. And this is a culmination of a lot of uh, discussions between the Ethereum community uh, and uh, the Hyperledger community. Uh, we've always, I think, since the very beginning, wanted to have uh, Ethereum. Uh, we're about code um, and we, we, we love all different technologies. So I think you can now, uh, with this, we, we'd like to have a spectrum of stuff that can run on the main net to the most permissioned uh, kind of DLT. So we have the whole spectrum of, of, of technology. And to give you a little bit more, this is, this is a slide I actually got from the Bezu team. They gave it to me last night. I said, have you got any slides? This is one of them. <laughs> so this is kind of like, they kind of show how the two came together, right? The two different worlds. Uh, so you have on the top, Ethereum was announced back in 2013. You know, that the, we obviously started with Bitcoin as we all know, and then we had Ethereum with Vitalik uh, and, uh, and, and many others, right? And out of that, uh, um, you know, was you know, smart contract and, and, and all the things that we know about Ethereum today at the One World Computer. It was launched, Consensus itself was also founded, um, which was founded by a number of the founders of Ethereum. And they kind of started a company called Pegasus. At the same time, uh, EEA was founded. That's the uh, Enterprise Ethereum uh, Alliance. Now, the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, uh, a lot of people say, how does that compare uh, with Hyperledger. Well, uh, Enterprise Ethereum Alliance is a standards body, right? And maybe you not have the word Ethereum on it because it uses its technologies. They have a, a lot of standards which are not just about Ethereum. Uh, so if you look in the world uh, of all these organizations within uh, within blockchain, you know, the developers, you have, uh, you always, uh, and this is what Brian Bellendorf always talks about, uh, you, have, uh, you have people who create standards. So that's EEA, right? There's people who manage standards, who, who, who regulate standards, and there's people that write code. We write code, EEA writes standards. So there are a different type of organization, right? And then they launched a, a Pantheon, uh, which started this Ethereum client, um, which ultimately uh, became Bezu. At the same time, in parallel, Hyperledger launched 2016. Uh, Consensus actually was one of the first uh, early members uh, of, uh, um, as you know, as I said, always, uh, Ethereum's always been uh, close to Hyperledger. Uh, and then uh, Fabric was, a, was, was started, then we have Sawtooth, Burrow, uh, and then EA joined. Uh, and at that time, uh, the conversation came together and Pantheon was contributed to uh, Hyperledger and it became uh, Hyperledger Bezu. And now in March, 2020, Hyperledger Bezu became active uh, as, as a version one, and now it's just grown and grown and grown. And if we look at the next slide, if I can get there, um, you know, there's been a lot happening this year uh, since really August, 2019. And that was a big year. I remember uh, after it replied, I did a, we did a big meetup in Beijing. We had Joe Lubin there. And there was a lot of, a lot of, a lot of noise because this was a very significant step uh, in, in uh, having uh, an Ethereum a project like this uh, within Hyperledger. They've had 40 releases this year. They've got 60 contributors. Um, they presented at the Global Forum. I'm not gonna talk about the features, I think, and Anthony is gonna go through that. Uh, and they gave, gained the active status in 2020. So, and they created a transparent and open, as I said, the key thing is transparency and they have a very open maintainer process. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that in a second. I just thought I'd share this slide because in the end, we're talking about the technology, but what is the technology used for? I was doing a presentation to a, a university uh, about, I think it's in November, as you can see from this slide. And I just, that week, I just had a look what, what's happened in CBDCs. And there were four different announcements, major announcements. And if you look at them, the first one, uh, Reserve Bank, that's working with consensus. Um, second one is, we don't actually know what's the, the China banking, uh, the CBDC, but that, that's a separate kind of thing. Uh, then we have uh, the Bank of Thailand, which I know is, is Bezu. They announced they're working with Bezu. Uh, and then uh, actually Cambodia, which we talked about earlier today, is a ROA. But the thing is that CBDCs are using, uh, 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 and these private proof concepts are using uh, Hyperledger uh, Bezu. And Hyperledger Bezu is being used by real applications out there today. So uh, it's not just something in, in, it's something that's live and running uh, and capable to run uh, production systems and in one of the hottest areas, CBDCs. So how do you get involved? Uh, well, uh, 
as with everything at High Project, you have uh, any High Pleasure project, uh, you can go uh, to our wiki, uh, you can go to GitHub, uh, we have chat. Uh, I hope everyone knows how to use chat, chat.hyperledger.org. If you don't know, you get Linux Foundation ID. Um, you can contribute. We want people to contribute. We always like people to, to learn about it, use it, and then contribute back. And we do have a thing called Bezu Quick Start. So before I hand back, so that's really an introduction about where Bezu is, and I position it within uh, Hyperledger. Uh, I just want to uh, finish with two other things, right? Uh, we have this developer newsletter now. So uh, I will put this sign up in, in, the, in the chat. Uh, if you sign up for this you weekly, you get a newsletter. And this is a newsletter created by our developers for our developers. Actually, it's a wiki that's opened up in the beginning of the week. You can put ideas into there and then they develop it and out it goes uh, at, on, on the Friday. Uh, the interesting thing, it, it has noteworthy pull requests that so goes through all our projects. And they think, oh, this is an interesting pull request that you may as a technologist be interested in. So it has, that's one thing. And uh, this week I noticed they had a, uh, uh, an update, quarterly update on Bezu. So this is a good way uh, to keep, and this is for techno, tech, 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 not with a, the more marketing kind of thing. This is really for, for technologists. And finally, uh, I want to talk about, and we're very excited, we're five years old, which uh, um, when I was five, I was quite small, but actually for, a, for, a, for, a, for, a, for blockchain, five years is a long time. Uh, and we're five years old and we have a celebration uh, next year. Uh, 18th next Friday, uh, which everyone is welcome to turn up. We'll, uh, Brian will do a quick, uh, 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 a quick uh, overview of, of, of the year, a bit of a celebration. We'll do some AMA, and then we're going to break out into different sessions for a kind of networking activity. So please do register for this as well. Okay, I will now hand it to the true expert. <laughs> Anathan, if you could now take us through uh, your details of what, what is Bezu. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. That was a wonderful introduction to Bezu. So um, like uh, if you, any of the participants want to ask questions regarding the introduction, you guys can post that in the chat and uh, Julian will take it up. Okay. So, um, so let me start with the Bezu. So I hopefully let me start with sharing the screen. Okay, so I hope everyone can see this. Okay, so uh, what is Hyperledger Basu? So uh, as uh, Julian um, gave, gave us a brief introduction, it's an open source Ethereum client. So simply saying, it's an Ethereum client developed by the Hyperledger community. And they did a very hell of a job at it and it's a very good client. So just basically returning Java and using that you can do everything that you would do using a normal Ethereum client, like client you can connect to any of the private or public Ethereum networks or the main Ethereum networks or like the test networks uh, such as Ring of et cetera. And uh, uh, the uh, best thing using Besu is that you can like construct uh, private uh, networks. And uh, Besu currently supports proof of work and uh, proof of authority consensus algorithms such as IBFT and the click. So uh, there will be more on that in the next slides. So uh, where can we use Besu? So uh, basically Besu we, we can use in a secure and high transaction rate private blockchains if needed. And uh, it also, I mean, apart from the uh, other features such as the mining, sending transaction or executing smart contract, we have privacy and permission. Now, uh, let's uh, look more into the features of uh, Besu. So basically uh, Besu implements the standards defined by the Enterprise Alliance and uh, also, it's an implementation of Ethereum virtual machine in the Java. So basically, you can deploy smart contracts and execute them in the uh, Besu uh, private network or if you use the Besu client. Now, uh, consensus, uh, the, there are actually three consensus mechanisms that are supported by uh, Besu. So uh, there are two proof of authority variants. The first one is Istanbul uh, Byzantine Fault Torrance 2.0. And uh, basically, the transaction and blocks that comes uh, into this network are validated by uh, some people called validators. Uh, so basically, it's the same name that given to miners, those who like those who validate and commit the block. So one validator will uh, propose the block, and the others will validate and uh, endorse that block. Then they can be converted into that block. So IBFT has immediate finality uh, due to that fact. There won't be any fork or angle blocks uh, on the main chain. Everything. Every block, uh, every valid block will be committed to the main chain. 
Now, uh, to uh, for a transaction to be committed, you need to at least uh, two by three of the validators um, operating on that same block to create. And uh, if you, if your network like if you're like uh, running a test network, you at least need four validators to uh, commit a block into the chain. Then uh, the next one uh, variant of proof of authority we have is a click. I mean, these are like just uh, in, uh, like different names that we name them. So it is actually a more uh, fault tolerant than uh, IBFT because uh, you, uh, you only need uh, a half of the validators to validate the block and um, the existing validators, I mean, multiple validators can propose the vote and uh, remove and add the um, validators also. Now, uh, due to this fact, like um, a click doesn't have immediate finality and uh, there, there should be possibility of uh, forking or ungrouped nodes in the, uh, in the main chain. Now, finally, uh, we have proof of work, our good old uh, consensus algorithm. And uh, yeah, that, those are the uh, three consensus algorithms uh, supported by the Hyperledger plus two. So uh, basically, if you are connecting to the main Ethereum network, the consensus algorithm will be proof of work. Uh, I mean, I hope they will change that to proof of stake in the near future. Uh, so uh, others will be available. All these algorithms will be available if you are like uh, trying to set up a private Ethereum network. Now, uh, as usual, uh, with the normal uh, clients, uh, Besu can also uh, perform a mining uh, within the network, do transactions, uh, deploy smart contracts, and interact with the uh, uh, decentralized applications. Apart from these features, the uh, best features that are introduced by Besu, that is, the, they are like uh, implementing the standards defined by the Ethereum Alliance. So the first one is privacy. Uh, basically, uh, you can create private groups uh, that are basically uh, you have an entire network and you can create your own groups inside that network and the transaction that are sent between uh, inside these networks will be private only to those participants. So the participants in the group can only see them and uh, like have a, um, have a transaction between them. So to achieve this, uh, uh, Besu is actually using a private transaction manager called Orion which is actually part of the uh, Quorum uh, privacy protocols and uh, like um, the Quorum block, basically the Quorum blockchain's privacy protocols. And uh, they are using the Orion node to, uh, sorry, no, uh, to keep the private transaction and uh, the BESO will keep track of the state of these private transactions. The next uh, main feature of BESO is that uh, we can like uh, we uh, we can specify which accounts in which uh, the transaction I mean which have the transaction abilities or who can write into the blockchain all those things and then we can specify which node can enter into the blockchain network also. Uh, so uh, that are the uh, main uh, features that Besu uh, adds and that are the very important features that Besu adds. Apart from that, uh, this this is actually uh, one of the uh, necessary feature when we are actually running a node. Uh, the BESO uh, provides us with the uh, uh, best uh, monitoring softwares that are available and you, uh, it is tested and you can like uh, connect with them and uh, explore. And also we have Alato, which is a block, uh, block explorer and uh, Gafna, Prometheus. These can be used to uh, monitor the health of a uh, Ethereum node or the BESO uh, client. And uh, that will be very helpful when we are actually using that on an enterprise platform. Uh, then uh, simply, what can you do with the BESU? So you can create private networks. Uh, BESU is actually a, a command line interface. And uh, I mean, all these tools can be used to provide you with the overall um, working condition or the status monitoring of that BESU client. And it will be always be running a JSON RPC. I mean, you can communicate with the JSON RPC via HTTP or web sockets, and you can gather all the details regarding that. Now, um, Besu uh, is uh, developed by Hyperledger, so, but that doesn't mean it doesn't support anything that is on the other end of the part. So Truffle, Remix, Web3j, and uh, there is also a, a net designer developed by uh, developed in Apache 2.0 license because uh, uh, the Besu, uh, the input Besu doesn't have, uh, like uh, just like other clients like Get, it doesn't have a key manager. So you can either use a third party key manager just like MetaMask or you can use the at signer that which is provided by the BESU itself. Now, uh, what are the main benefits? Basically, we can use BESU to create a private network if you have the need or the uh, your use cases arise those kind of things. So that will be better. I mean, I have I've been I've been uh, like uh, playing with up uh, with BESU and uh, it's actually a better client. I mean, it, you, you may know that it's a CLI, but it's a better client than uh, most of the uh, Ethereum other Ethereum clients because you can. 
uh, you, they provide you a much uh, smoother experience. So you can just directly connect and interact with them. And they uh, uh, also that um, uh, Besu, the developers of Besu has uh, provided us with a neat and uh, well maintained uh, documentation. So in any case, if you want to exploit the uh, other uh, things that are not um, uh, this, uh, like listed over here, then we can like go ahead and uh, do that. So now uh, that's all about uh, Besu. Uh, we can now uh, go ahead and uh, talk about how we can create a private uh, permission network and uh, how it will be working. Uh, if you guys have any like uh, doubts, you can just like post that in the chat. So we can uh, go into that too. Okay, so uh, first let me uh, uh, tell you about the development environment. I mean, um, you, uh, there are many options in which you can actually install Besu. So, uh, I'll, uh, I mean, you can use the Docker, you can use the Docker, uh, you can use with the help of the Docker, or um, you can um, you can directly build the Besu from the uh, source code, or you can uh, use it using the install, installing the binary. So, Basically, Besu is a Java client, so it will need the Java versions. Yeah, sorry. So I hope you can see it. So uh, the Java, uh, I have tested it with the Java 15, uh, JDK 15. So basically, it only needs uh, JDK 11 plus or any versions that is above 11, uh, you can use that. And uh, uh, for the Besu, uh, I use, I am using the uh, 20 point, uh, Sorry, 20.10.2 version. So that that's actually the latest version yesterday. So that there might there might be any uh, there could be some improvements. So yeah. So uh, you can either use um, uh, the uh, Docker and pull out these images and run them, or uh, I I just want to know how the things work in a deep day. So I'll tell you guys how I did this, uh, how I set up the environment. So the best way is to uh, download the Java SDK. Like you guys can just go to the Oracle's uh, page. And there you can download the Java JDK. And you can download it for any of the versions. Like um, for what I did for my, uh, my Ubuntu version is that I downloaded the Linux 64 compressed archive. Uh, so basically you can just download that. And um, this is the archive. So you can just uh, use, open that using an archive manager. Or any seven C four and like like any of the um, compressor managers. So then just copy this folder to any any of the location that you want, and you just need to uh, set up the environmental variable uh, for that. So like uh, you can set the environmental variables in many places within Ubuntu. I, in case of Windows, you can just uh, directly go for um, the environmental variables for uh, in the my computer options. And uh, for Mac, it is also the same. So for me, uh, what I did that, I used to gedit and I put them in the uh, slash etc environment location. So I hope you guys can see this. So this is basically where you can specify the environmental variables for Ubuntu and um, I have already specified it for the Java and uh, um, Java and Besu, and also these are the where the executions uh, remains. The executables uh, are located, and uh, uh, as most of the clients that runs with the Java needs the Java home environmental variable where it will be specifying where you have installed uh, the or installed or where you have like copy paste your um, JDK. So this will be the home page, and you can just provide that address over here. So uh, that's all about the uh, development environment of Besu. Now we can go ahead and set up uh, an actually actual uh, private network using uh, Besu. Then we will uh, see how a fully fledged uh, Besu network is uh, working. And also we'll see how the uh, other tools such as MetaMask, uh, Remix ID can interact with the private network that is set up to using Besu. Okay, so um, uh, so in any case, if you guys want to uh, find this later, you guys can like, um, Go 
go to this location. So tutorial said that we have uh, called permission and create a permission network. So I'll be just uh, following this document to create a permissioned network for us. So I'll just put this in the chat. Okay, so um, basically, uh, we, what we, I'll just go through what are the steps that we'll be doing. So uh, first we'll uh, prepare an environment like uh, some directories for storing the data regarding uh, each nodes. Uh, so we'll be like creating a privacy permission network consisting of three nodes and um, uh, we'll be setting up two, network, uh, two accounts to uh, do the interactions and uh, uh, three nodes can communicate with the net, within the network or like can only join the network. We'll be doing that kind of thing. Uh, so first we need to create an uh, folders uh, where we can specify where we'll be storing the data uh, for that particular node then we can uh, create an address for a particular node because uh, when uh, we are we'll be uh, building this network using the click algorithm which is a proof of authority variant and uh, for the click algorithm uh, in the genesis file we have to specify at least one uh, proposal or validator so we can uh, create the address. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't have any ballot management, but it allows you to create addresses. So like the key pair private and uh, address key pairs can be created using this. And after that, we'll uh, configure the Genesis file. Then uh, we can uh, configure a permission file. I mean, as I told you earlier, we can specify which accounts can write and read from uh, the Ethereum network. So we'll create a permission file and we will create, uh, specify two accounts to be uh, permissible to write uh, from the network. So anyone can read from the network. <clears throat> then uh, we can uh, specify which nodes will be able to interact with the uh, network and we will start the three nodes then we will uh, add that nodes into the permissioning file, then we will connect them together. So that will be our entire, um, um, how we will be setting up an Ethereum uh, private network using BESU. So uh, let's just go ahead and see how we can do that. Okay, so let me just create a new folder from our lab. So, this lab. Now, uh, over here, I'll open a terminal and I will create the folder structure. I mean, uh, this is the folder structure that we'll be going to need. So, yeah, for me, it will be best to lab instead of permission network. In Ubuntu, we can create MKD using uh, this MKD here and minus P for uh, like creating repetitive directory. So data for node two, then for node three. And we will get a structure like this. So after creating that, we can uh, go ahead and uh, create a public key and uh, the corresponding uh, private key for that. And to do this, we can use this corresponding command. So uh, basically, as you all know, BESU is actually a command line tool. So this will be the main command and these are all the parameters uh, that we will be specifying. So uh, we need to uh, we actually need to run this uh, inside the first node folder. So let's just make it our way over there. And let's run that command. Otherwise these are paths. So this is where we specify where we should uh, store the data. And this is where we are specifying where we should uh, store the node, uh, node key related. I mean the public, the address and the private key related to this generation. Okay, so we look at uh, the follow structure again, we can see there are two new folders. Uh, one is the key and node address. So if we go back inside the node one and you can see there are two new folders and if you like uh, go ahead and open it with an editor. So you can see this is the private key and um, the 
this is the address uh, that we need. So uh, now next we need to generate our uh, the uh, Genesis file. So um, basically some other Ethereum tools might have some uh, tools for generating, but uh, we can get gen the Genesis file from the development documents over here and uh, we can just modify it. Now, uh, first let me just create that and I'll just um, tell you guys how we, how, what are the components inside that Genesis file. So you can just name it. Uh, so let's go back to the do root directory. Uh, mine is the Basula. So let's uh, name it gedit. I'll just call it uh, genesis.json. It, it, it is a JSON formatted um, JSON formatted file, so you have to specify the extension as JSON. And paste over here. Okay, uh, uh, before explaining, the first thing we need to do is that we need to uh, specify the uh, any one of the va uh, validators name inside the Genesis file. So that's why we created the node address for that. So uh, when you specify, you can avoid this uh, part. So you don't need to um, include that part. So copy the other part and replace this node one address over here. So uh, the extra data will be something like this. And um, now uh, let's just go ahead and explore uh, the uh, details that are displayed over here. So in the configuration, we can specify the chain ID, which is for uniquely identifying our data uh, for our chain or blockchain. Then we are using the constant for uh, update version. I mean, over the uh, course of Ethereum, there has been many updates. Uh, then we are using a click um, consensus algorithm and the block generation period is 15 seconds. You can get, you guys, if you are guys working on that, you guys can provide a lesser, sec, a lesser um, interval. I'll go with the default and the epoch length means uh, the, uh, when, uh, when the, when after 3000, uh, 30,000 blocks, we will reset the voting pattern and choose a new water and all those. So that is where we reset the votings and uh, proposals and all those things. Then we can specify coin base. So I, I, that's actually a default value. So we don't really need to specify. We need to specify the uh, one, any one of the validators address in the extra data. And uh, the gas limit, uh, the gas limit for the network and all these others are like, um, these are like uh, normal for a minimum block. Uh, so in case of agencies, we will also have that, but we'll be uh, leaving them as empty at the time of creation. Then uh, uh, as you know, this is actually a proof of authority network. So uh, we can pre-fund uh, some an accounts with the uh, um, balance. So here we have specified uh, three accounts and the balance for them. So you can either see them in hexadecimal or in normal uh, binary format. And you can see there are some uh, private key and comments. So these things won't be written into the uh, actual Genesis block. I mean, based on this Genesis block, we'll be create, uh, Genesis file, we'll be creating the Genesis block. But so these things won't be written. So you don't need to worry about that. Uh, as you know, we don't really have a uh, valid manager. That's why the uh, developers have provided us with the public address and the a corresponding private key for that so that we can manage that. So you guys like, if you guys want, you guys can replace it with the, these uh, generated key and address. I'll just go with the default one. Uh, yeah, so uh, that is all. Uh, the other number and gas used is uh, general for a normal block, but for Genesis block, it will be an empty string, empty values, uh, basically. Now using this Genesis block, uh, do not forget to save this after uh, creating this, uh, do not forget to save this. So using this Genesis block, now we can go ahead and uh, run our network. Uh, but before that, we need to create a, per a permission configuration file for each node. So yeah, you need to create a file called permission config.toml, uh, which is a TML format file, and you need to specify these values inside that. So let's just go ahead and do that. So I'll use gedit to create those files. I mean, you can just uh, create a file one, uh, in one place and uh, copy them uh, to different places. So gedit. So yeah, where you can like uh, paste this. 
So as you can see, uh, we are giving the uh, write permission to, to these two accounts, which are like uh, the accounts that we pre-funded in the Genesis part. Like if you guys want, you can uh, change that too, but um, I'll stick with the default. I think I have provided the wrong. I provide a space uh, in between them, that's why the error. Okay, so let's just uh, copy that. So the, you have to fo follow this format. Basically, you have two variables, uh, account silo list and the node silo list. And you, you need to open a square bracket and inside that you, inside, uh, that you can like uh, provide the values in a comma separated manner. And you have to, uh, like enclose the values in uh, course, double course also. Okay, so yeah, that's for the first node. Then for the second one. And finally for the third one. Okay, make sure you have uh, saved all the files. Sorry about that. Make sure you have saved all the files and they are in the correct format. Yeah, now we can like close them because. Um, and also come back and just check your uh, structures are saying that the same. Yeah, so inside the data, you have something called this uh, config file. Now let's just go ahead and uh, continue. Now uh, we need to start the different nodes. So uh, the um, community has provided us currently with the uh, commands for both Mac and Windows. And uh, in case of Ubuntu, it will be same as Mac. So let's just copy the, uh, them and uh, I'll explain them how, how this, uh, this works. So first, we'll run the first node. So let's open a terminal inside node, node one. Yeah, so already, uh, yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. So we just start it. Okay, I'll just explain the command before executing. So uh, as you know, the main command BESU, then we are specifying where you want to store uh, the, uh, the blockchain's data. Uh, that is where you use the parameter and uh, specify the path. So this is a relative path and uh, it will like append the person working directly alongside with uh, data and uh, in case if you haven't created the folder called data, it will automatically create one for you. Uh, we created that folder structure because we want to uh, specify we will be storing those uh, node data, I mean node key data. Then we need to specify the uh, path of the Genesis file. Uh, dot dot means in the previous directory, in the main directory. And actually I have named it as uh, genesis.json. So yeah, so I'll be uh, doing that. And then uh, we are specifying that we'll be using a uh, permission nodes config file. Uh, that is the, uh, uh, the, you need to load up whenever uh, the client is loading, you need to load up this, uh, this configuration file and uh, follow those configurations. And then we are also saying that only these accounts, only the account specified in that file will also be enabled. Then um, we will be using, I mean, every um, clients, I mean, most of the clients in the blockchain domain are using the RPC API uh, format and we are enabling the RPC over the HTTP protocol. And we are uh, giving access to these many uh, modules. I mean, in this, uh, uh, in this, uh, when, we, when we are running this client, we'll have access to some APIs and uh, there are many uh, API endpoints. Uh, there are many groups of API endpoints and uh, we are just specifying that we need admin at net prime and the click protocol so basically these are for different uh, purposes we'll uh, know them and we are allowing all the host and all the origins to ask, uh, have access to this particular network so uh, sorry particular besu uh, node and uh, yeah that's all for the uh, first besu node we'll just uh, start it and uh, hopefully it runs Uh, 
Okay, so it seems like I have a handover for that. Okay, so it looks like something is running on my, um, my computer. So I need to specify the RPC port also. It's like some remainder of my ex experiments. So uh, I'll uh, this is the RPC port. So this is where the uh, endpoint of BESU will be exposed and you can specify that. So I'll just start it with running in 8541. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, we have no problem and uh, as we started producing our blocks also. So uh, now uh, the next one is, I'll just explain about what you are list and you know you are list. So as you all know, uh, when uh, to identify a specific computer in a network, we know we have something called the IP address or IPv6 or V4 address. And just like that in the Ethereum network, we call something called Eno, Ethereum node address. And using that, you can like establish connection with another node. So um, keep in mind about this one because we need to uh, specify this in the permission you are. Okay, so let's just go ahead and run the other nodes also. So to start the second node, uh, go to the second node directory, open a terminal. So I'll run that in 4.2 and I need to change the name of the Genesis file due to the fact that I have changed it. As you can see, there are there is a one more. Uh, yeah, so. Oh, yeah, so I think. Yeah, it was okay. Yeah, so that was a name problem. Okay, as you can see, uh, we have a one more parameter over here, uh, P2P port. Uh, P2P port, which is used to actually uh, specify uh, where we can communicate with each other of the nodes. I mean, the, for it is for peer discovery protocol, peer-to-peer -peer communication protocol, and endpoint for peer-to-peer -peer communication. So. In case if you have not provided that, then it will be 30301. So you can have default values for all those things. As you can see, these are not connected, so they are actually waiting for the peer. Now let's go ahead and run the other one too. I'll just remove the unnecessary command prompts. Uh, this guy is over here is actually creating nodes and waiting for other uh, other block other nodes. So let's just uh, run the last one too. So uh, when running the uh, commands, it will be always preferable if you like uh, paste them in another uh, text editor and uh, edit them, then change them, execute them in the command line because there, there are always some problems if we do that otherwise. Okay, so uh, as usual, I changed the Genesis file's name and the port. Okay, now go back to node three. Seems like everyone is up and running and everyone is happy. So, so uh, next thing we need to do is that we need to add, uh, currently as you know that inside this config file, you can see no nodes are connect, allowed to uh, connect to this particular node. So we need to specify which node is able to connect to this list. So to do that, we can actually use uh, the endpoints, I mean, um, there are APIs for establishing or adding data to that particular node. So we can use these endpoints to do that. So uh, let me just um, copy this. Okay, now uh, using the um, 
perm uh, add permission add nodes to allow list uh, method uh, if that is exposed in the pursuit line we can actually add the nodes that are necessary for this uh, these things to uh, connect with each other now uh, how like uh, you remember the inner address that we whenever we started we will have an inner address right so that is one way to get that or you can use the cal command corresponding command to that and uh, like if you guys really want to have an ui interface to that i hope you guys know about the postman which is actually a client that we can use to query the uh, apis uh, apis on different sites and uh, besu uh, the developers of besu actually have given us a Uh, one second. Fantastic way in which uh, they have actually um, uh, created a collection collection of how we can call all of these uh, APIs, and uh, they have like uh, given us you run in Postman. So if you click on this option, uh, you will be redirected to a Postman, which is actually the same as the call command. You can uh, query uh, anything over. Uh, that is a host or anywhere. Yeah, that's actually taking some time. So as you can see, if you uh, this these are uh, collections provided by the Ethereum Hyperledger uh, guys. So uh, the Besu Hyperledger uh, developer community. So instead that you can have access to every um, every node and they have pre-configured it for our hours. So like if you, I want to know the inode address of uh, the node running on 8542, which is actually the node 2, I can just request that and uh, get that particular inode address. So it's easier, uh, easier like this. So uh, let's just go ahead and collect all the inode addresses. So uh, this is uh, why I told you guys uh, need to copy this to an auto editor and uh, edit it over there. Uh, as for node two, you get that too. Uh, okay, so, uh, so then finally we need node three. So uh, you guys uh, can use this to interact with the node. The node. So we'll be uh, calling this uh, uh, method API endpoint, and uh, we can like uh, do that for the first node, uh, which is running on eight five four five, in running on local host eight five four five for uh, for one. Sorry then for two, for the second node, and for three, for the third node. So you can just uh, open another command prompt anywhere, actually, you don't really need to do, open it anywhere. I mean, uh, in the exact same folder. And just paste those commands. So if you see that uh, um, the uh, output for that particular commands are like uh, as result is success, then all this will be added into that node folder. So if I go back and uh, open this, Sorry about that. <coughs> so you can see the inode address has been added for that specific uh, three nodes, and now we can like connect with each other. Okay, now uh, in the same way, we use the call command. We have another command to call a certain another method to connect each node with each other. So that method is called admin dot add pair. We can use that method to add, um, we will first connect the second node to the first node, then third node to the first node, and uh, finally the third node to the second node. So let's just go ahead and do that. We'll uh, calling to the second and third node, so we need the E node address of the first node. So. Let's just go back to Postman and we get that. Okay. 
actually work and I'll just uh, yeah so now in case of uh, node 3 we also need to connect that to node 2 so let's get the address of node 2 now we just need to execute these together so let's just go ahead and execute them so yeah now everyone is uh, is connected together and to know that we can like uh, get the peer count for each node so i just uh, ask the node one for the peer count so yeah there it is connected with the two other node and uh, in case of node two two so and uh, in case of three yeah same results so if we go back i don't need this term yeah go back and look at the other terminals you can see that uh, they are listing out the number of peers that it is connected with and this was the one main one and the it is syncing with the other node so it has imported the um, uh, blocks that has been generated thus far so uh, you may you might uh, think that the uh, there are no transaction happening so why why the blocks are being generated so because that's because ethereum allows zero blocks mining if if there are five block uh, five transaction it will mine if, even if there are zero transaction it will mine so that's actually an automatic process that is uh, happening in a loop so this is how we uh, create an ethereum uh, network using a private network using a best soup so yeah um, if you guys have any doubts regarding that you guys can post in the chat otherwise uh, i'll i'll show you guys how we can do a transaction uh, within the ethereum network using uh, something called uh, metamask because we didn't we did not have any default default uh, default application uh, sorry default key manager for ethereum so i'll just how i have like i make a so let me just uh, quickly uh, go over the um, uh, metamask installation if you guys have any uh, doubts you guys can ask in the meantime Sorry about the two. This was um, I need MetaMask for. Uh... Uh, hi, Anandan. Yeah. Uh, there was a couple of uh, there were a couple of questions before. Uh huh. Uh, so one was, can we plug other consensus mechanisms to best suit? Uh, uh, you mean like uh, we generate our own consensus algorithms and plug them? Yeah. Uh, uh, currently or no. any other uh, consensus like writing a custom one no i mean uh, the basu community is actually working on that uh, writing customs uh, consensus uh, algorithms and plugging them currently there are like I, currently it's not possible currently the only allowed consensus mechanism are the uh, pbft uh, click and uh, proof of work okay another question was uh, do we write smart contracts in java for basu no, uh, you can use the same uh, smart contract writing languages uh, such as Solidity or uh, the Viper um, that we use on Ethereum. And if, uh, like, uh, if you if you the, the Java language that is uh, supported, if you that is still supported, then you can use it. It's the same process as the uh, Ethereum nodes. I'll just show you an example. Okay, so. Uh, also, uh, can we expect uh, the security and privacy from Besu like Hyperledger Fabric? Yes, uh, you can. Uh, that um, I mean, uh, now that we have a privacy, I mean, uh, you guys might have might not understood the way we uh, committed the uh, private key to the block, uh, Genesis block. That's just there for the comments that won't be stored within the uh, private block. Uh, so we can accept expect the security just like in, we expect in Hyperledger. If, if we are running a private network, in case we are like uh, going for the, the main Ethereum network, uh, it will have the, uh, the standards of an Ethereum network. 
Uh, no, I think the question was specific uh -huh. to Besu with respect to security and privacy, like in Hyperledger Fabric. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. So, uh, um, like, just like the privacy groups in the, uh, sorry, uh, like the channels, uh, it's the privacy group in uh, group that we use in Besu is a similar, uh, not not the same, similar to the channels in Fabric. So, yeah, we can accept the uh, same security uh, that is we, we are getting from the Hyperledger. Uh, so, um, does Besu give, uh, okay, I think this is related, does Besu give private channel communication ledger mechanism uh, inside a network, like, like uh, Fabric? Yeah, so I'm, 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 I'm not completely aware about how the uh, communication that happens in the Fabric channels, but uh, uh, they have in the, in the, inside the privacy groups of Besu, uh, those who are like participants of the Besu can communicate with each other and the other people might, will not be able to see the contents of that transaction. And uh, those are within the channel can add or remove uh, new participants or like all the participants within that. And uh, the new participants added will be able to see the history of the transaction that happened within the live. Okay, I think that's all the questions that we had. Okay. Yeah, okay. So I I'll just uh, show you how we can like interact using the MetaMask and uh, Remix ID. I mean, I'll just uh, give you a sample deployment. So. So I'll just uh, set it up very quickly and Now, as you know, uh, MetaMask can be used to seamlessly connect within any nodes or any Ethereum network. So I'll, I'll just try to connect it with the current node. So to do that, you can go use the custom RPC option within the Ethereum networks menu. So yeah. And uh, we already have some preference to connect different networks. So I just connect one with the Besu, uh, which will be running on local uh, HTTP. Local host. So uh, the chain ID was the same as we like provided in the in the Genesis file. So in case if you forgot that chain ID, you can just give it a pass value, and MetaMask will query it for you, and you can just copy that over here. So after that, you know, close the network, and now we have established connection with the network, and. If you remember, we are already pre-funded some accounts. So we can go ahead and use that account. Sorry, uh, get the private key for that account and uh, inside MetaMask, we can import that account using the private key. Yeah, so uh, these are the accounts and uh, like you can also import the uh, node address. The other one too. So this is how like we can create. Okay, so so these are the pre-funded ones. And if you want to like send um, the either, you can just simply send it using uh, these. So like after it is finished, we can like uh, see the transaction and uh, in case, uh, so let, let it finish. So, and in case if you want to uh, deploy uh, a smart contract or develop and deploy smart contract, you can like uh, in a quick way, you can simply use the Remix ID 
which is actually a developing uh, um, ID for both Solidity and Viper languages. So uh, when we load, this will be the default. Oh yeah, so I think that transaction is confirmed. As you can see, we have sent uh, some either to this uh, particular account. And uh, as you uh, recall, we didn't add the uh, first account or this account to be um, like to have right permission to the network. So let's see if we uh, send back some money, we be able to do that. So yeah, so I'll just I'll send it back and say one ether. Confirm. Yeah, so that transaction failed due to the fact that it, this account doesn't have permission to send any transaction to that uh, transaction to the network. So yeah. Okay, so in case how we can deploy an, um, an, an, a smart contract. So I'll use the default smart contract provided by the Remix ID. This is a smart contract to uh, store and retrieve uh, some values, a number of a numerical value. Now, uh, you, uh, how we can do is that we can connect to MetaMask using uh, Remix ID. To do that, we can first we need to like compile the smart contract. Then we can use the deploy and run transaction plugin to establish connection. So we'll be connected to the second account with the account which we have Ether. And uh, the everything is, is uh, same as usual. We can like uh, deploy the smart contract and we need to provide uh, either for that. And yeah, the transaction is completed. We can store a value. Yeah, so it will take uh, 15 seconds as you can. Yeah, so that's also confirmed. And if you retrieve, you can get that back. So uh, it's, a, it's as simple as it. Uh, just the uh, running is only only the different things are the uh, running of the node and um, and the additional uh, privacy and uh, protection mechanics are provided by the best. So in case we are running in actually, um, I mean, act, in a private network using best. So everything else is uh, same as we operate within the Ethereum community also. Uh, this, this they have provided us with a very good great client that uh, has a seamless. Um, connectivity with the other uh, tools in the Ethereum network. Now, yeah. So, what, what's the time? And then you can conclude, it's oh, almost okay. time. Okay, so uh, I'll just show you guys a, a, a quick overview of how we can run an actual, how we will be, uh, how it will look like when we are uh, completely configured it for an enterprise solution or we are running for an enterprise uh, thing and then we can like join the session. So if you guys like uh, uh, want to do that for yourself, you guys can like go to this location and uh, use that. So um, I think there, there was one in the chat. So if, if a few members in a group want to make a private ledger for them, whether they want to create another network or is there any other options in person. So basically um, every node in the network are like in the same network and these groups are what we call a private ledger. So the groups of them are private ledger and you can like, uh, if, you want, if you want to form some, something else with anyone else. Oh. So uh, something else, then we can like do that also. Okay, then uh, let's see how we can um, execute another one. So uh, um, you guys have heard about the quorum. I mean, you guys might have cared about quorum, which was like a, like an, a, um, a blockchain network for private cases like that was a fork from Ethereum, which was started by uh, JP Morgan and later on it was like acquired by Consensus and Inc. And uh, we, we can create a quorum uh, network using BESU uh, in case that we will be running an Orion uh, tra privacy transaction node also. 
uh, but uh, we, we don't really need to worry about uh, those if you want to really have a quick look at how what the most uh, cases we have then we can like use this command and um, uh, we, we, everything will be done for you. So basically you need a, uh, to have Docker uh, on your system installed, Node.js. Uh, you can use the latest version. There is no problem with that. Like at all or Cortex, there's no problem with using that. And in case if you're running on Windows, you need to install Windows subsystem, uh, Linux. I mean that basically that uh, uh, Linux environment for, uh, provided by the Windows. Uh, then uh, you need to configure that into the Docker. And in case of uh, Ubuntu or Mac, you need to install Docker on that. Okay, so I also, uh, I mean, uh, pulling these uh, kind of different containers inside Docker takes uh, too much time. So I'll, I already have like, uh, like running, uh, how am I in running? So uh, to, uh, to close a Besu node, you can simply go ahead and use the control C option. So very smooth. Okay, I think I have uh, the main over here. Yeah, it seems they're already running. So these were the guys that in, um, they didn't let me run on 8545. So yeah, so any of them. Okay, uh, now uh, the containers and everything for, we have actually seven uh, no, uh, seven nodes inside that, which we have like a validator node and uh, the Orion nodes associated with that. We can uh, use a command uh, called, I mean, it's actually a script, an SL script inside that, and uh, we can use the rest. Uh, I already uh, started it. So first, when you guys uh, first do this, you will be using the uh, start.assist. So, yeah, sorry, everything is running. So, uh, list.sh to see all the endpoints that are necessary, necessary for this running. So, uh, that will take some time to pop up if you guys have any doubts. I just can ask. So, I, otherwise, I'll just give you the overview. Basically, what we are going to see is that we'll uh, see the Grafna uh, node monitoring software or and a sample a D app. Uh, I hope you guys have heard about the Pet Shop, which was a just which is a famous uh, decentralized application by uh, a de demo decentralized application by uh, uh, Truffle, which is also the uh, tool frame, uh, development tool framework provided by Consensus. Uh, we'll also see how we can run that or connect that. So this entire suite provided by the uh, Pesu community or developers, and you can run everything and you can like have a glimpse of how how we can operate with this um, you know
So if you guys have any doubts, you can ask because this will be taking some time because it's actually uh, querying up all the necessary things that we need to run this network. Uh, and then there's a question. Uh, yeah. For... yeah. I saw it. Thank you. So, so are the application best, is, uh, best suited? So, uh, like, uh, I think, uh, are you like um, uh, sharing about the use case scenario or something like that? Oh, okay. So, uh, I mean, uh, all I uh, like if, if you like it, if it is an enterprise, like if you want uh, privacy and uh, uh, not all the uh, participants on the network doesn't want to like see the, uh, the these kind of transactions. Then uh, we can uh, connect. Sorry, uh, sorry about that. Um, if, if you want to have a privacy and all those things, uh, like if you want to have groups within the network, like sub sub um, chains within the network, like where we can interact with each other, like that. Those kind of uh, op those kind of scenarios can be used uh, where you can use this. And uh, uh, now, like Besu uh, provides with the proof of uh, like uh, click and a P P P say, sorry uh, PBFT consensus algorithm, uh, we can use them uh, in a higher transaction rate also. So yeah, basically those kind of scenarios fits the you know, uh, fits the use case of Besu directly. Oh, okay. So, um, uh, like, uh, just like the, uh, just like the APIs, using those API endpoints, uh, we can just explore them all over, uh, uh, like all of the connections over here. You can like use the permission groups and all those uh, using this connection. We can use them to uh, provide the permissions and uh, who can write and read into the network. Also. Looks like this is taking some time, and I just stop the yeah, all existing contents and stuff. Uh, to start again, uh, you can use the resume.sh. I just established connection to this uh, current network. I think that is running on the port five. Yeah. 
Yeah, my computer is getting very slow. This might be already up and uh, this command might be able to, be able to fetch that. Let's see if it is up or not. And if... Yeah. No, it hasn't been started yet. I think, uh, like, I think uh, my computer is not able to take up the load of running all those nodes and all those containers together. So um, that's that's all right, Anand. Then so yeah. I think we can wind up the session. It's already late. So uh, so it was a yes. wonderful session, Anand. So I think we can end it right now. So yeah. I think you were trying to run the quorum node and. Yeah. Or I'm, I was trying, trying to run a quorum example network, but uh, that take, takes up too much memory and processing power. So that's why. Okay, okay, that's fine. So the, this was a wonderful session by Anandan. And we had an introduction uh, to Hyperledger and Besu by uh, Julie, Mr. Julian Gordon. And uh, I think we can conclude the session. Hi, Julian. Hi, right, thank you. Great session. Thanks, Anantan. That's, that's wonderful. Yeah. So thanks, Julian. Thanks, Anantan. Uh, so now we will uh, go ahead and take some questions if uh, there are any. Uh, so to anyone, to Julian or Anantan, if the participants have any questions, uh, you can ask now. I think it's been a long day. Yeah, it's a wonderful <laughs> session. <laughs> yeah.
So I have one question for Julian. Like, how do you see Besu uh, in the couple, next couple of years in terms of the overall Hyperledger ecosystem? Like, how do you see the future of Besu? Well, I see, well, I think uh, Ethereum and Besu is strong, right? So uh, I see it growing and growing and growing. Um, of course, the question is, is really is, is, is how does that relate to Quorum? And that I think we're going to find out as well, right? Which is exciting, right? The, the, those two are now under the same kind of hat, uh, consensus. Uh, so no, I see, I see it growing. No, it's very exciting. Okay, cool. So uh, that's all for today's session. So I, it looks like we have uh, covered everything. Thanks once again. Thanks uh, for the uh, wonderful session by Julian and Anandan. It was a pleasure being with you all. Uh, we appreciate all the participants uh, staying here uh, for listening in and uh, we will see you at the next session. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye. So Just those who want to go back to the blockchain slide, uh, you, in the event link is there. So Julian, you are also free to uh, join us there and if you are, if you are, if you are time. So. We'll do. We'll do. All right. Take care. Participants can go back using the link. Bye, guys.